The Ring General has done it. As of now, Gunter has broken one of WWE's most infamous long-standing records. He has overtaken the Honky Tonk Man as the longest reigning WWE Intercontinental Champion of all time. Now, before we celebrate the dominance of Gunter, we should give an encore to Wayne Ferris, AKA the cool, cocky and bad Honky Tonk Man. His performance as an unwittingly despised Elvis Presley impersonator is well remembered when people arc back to the Hulkamania era of the World Wrestling Federation. Honky Top Man's iconic reign was never meant to happen at all. He's very much the embodiment of right place and right time, if you've not heard the story. June 13th, 1987, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was scheduled to defend his Intercontinental Championship against the natural Butch Reed. The plan was that night to put the title on Butch Reed because Vince McMahon was very upset with the dragon. Why? Well, the dragon had asked for paternity leave, the audacity of that man. However, Butch Reed never made it to the event no showing what would have been his crowning moment as IC champ. Vince still wanted the title of Steamboat for having the absolute, the absolute audacity to go and see his child. So he put the Honky Tonk Man in the match instead since he was in the building. One sneaky roll up later, we had a brand new IC champ and a very unexpected one at that. Now, Honky Top Man wasn't gonna hold it for that long. Reports say he was gonna drop the title to Jake the Snake Roberts, somebody with whom he danced with in the past. However, Jake was in quite a dark place in his real life at that time, and as a result of failing drug tests, Honky Top Man was told just to keep the belt a little bit longer until we find someone else. Far longer than anticipated he held that belt for. Countouts and DQs against the likes of Hillbilly Jim, Randy Savage, who he pipped for longest reigning champ, right after Macho Man's 414 days with the belt. Also Brutus Beefcake in the mix as well, and all those non-finishes kept the Blue Hawaii Blues away from our rhinestone record holder. He finally came unstuck in a similar way to how he began his IC title tour. Scheduled to deface, scheduled to face Beefcake at SummerSlam 1988, an injury took Brutus out of the picture. His last minute replacement was the ultimate warrior who bombed down to the ring and obliterated Honky Tonk Man in about 31 seconds to end the reign of terror at 454 days. Since then, there have been some sterling efforts to take the Honky Tonk Man down, way down. Cody Rhodes held the IC title for over 230 days in 2011, and Shelton Benjamin's one-time spring with intercontinental glory spanned 244 days. But then those great runs, Honky had them beat by nearly double every time. It became a fun statistic to throw around since Honky was such a comical addition for this prestigious accolade. Santino Morella, when he grabbed the IC gold, targeted Honky Tonk Man specifically with the Honkometer, a tally that tracked how close Santino was getting to becoming the greatest intercontinental champion of all the times. Many thought it would just be a record that WWE would leave to stand for their own amusement for all of the times. And that was until Gunter chopped his way onto the scene. This very history-making moment, bizarrely, was telegraphed many years ago. At 18 years old, Walter Hahn attended a Deutsche Wrestling Alliance show, his first ever taste of live pro wrestling. And it was on that night that he watched the Honky Tonk Man making a rare indie appearance in Europe, unaware that he was gonna shake, rattle and roll that man from the WWE record books less than two decades later. Now, since his in-ring debut in the wrestling world, Walter's strategy, as he was then called, has been to win a world title and hold on to it like your life depends upon it. His first ever title, the PWF North European Championship, he held for almost a full calendar year. He spent 417 days consecutively as Progress World Champion and a combined 662 days as WXW Unified World Champion. Whether you call him Walter, Big Daddy Walter, just Walter, all the caps, whatever you're calling him, he's been called champion for a very large part of his wrestling career. 
WWE had made no secret for years that they wanted to bring the big boy into the fold. And they eventually made it happen when Walter made his NXT UK debut in January of 2019. He immediately became a dominant force and captured the NXT UK title from Pete Dunne a few months later at NXT TakeOver New York over WrestleMania weekend. Whilst assisted by a global pandemic and a temporary mothballing of the brand, the Ring General would rule NXT UK as champion for 870 days. He put on jaw-dropping title defenses against the likes of Tyler Bate, Rampage Brown, Tommaso Ciampa, and Ilya Dragunov before succumbing to Dragunov by submission at NXT TakeOver 36. From here, Walter's trajectory was clear. A name change prepared him for the main roster, and a brand new fitness regime prepared him for greatness. And in June last year, Gunter dethroned Ricochet to begin a seismic chain reaction that put the Intercontinental title truly back in the discussion on WWE programming. Now, Gunter's supersedence, in contrast to the Honky Tonk Man's run, has been a study in supremacy. Honky Tonk's reign of terror, as we've discussed previously, was one of backdoor escapes and technicality tactics. A loss by countout or disqualification didn't worry Wayne as long as he took the belt back to Graceland with him. Gunter, on the other hand, has a nigh-on ironclad WWE win-loss record. In singles action, Gunter has fallen just twice on TV. In fact, the only televised singles loss Gunter has eaten since becoming the IC main man is a count-out one to Chad Gable on Raw in August. Every other match has been either a display of perverse aggression or a dogmatic dogfight, like the one he had with Sheamus at Clash at the Castle in Cardiff or his triple threat thunderclap with Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. He's also assisted in star-raising spectacles with the likes of Mustafa Ali, Xavier Woods and Chad Gable. The latter's spotlight on Raw put him in the hunt to be the guy to finally dethrone the leader of Imperium, mainly because people love him and also because Gunter, brah, you make Gable's kids cry, brah. From here, the conversation will turn to who will overthrow the Ring General. Certainly an Alpha Academy assault could spell the Omega of Gunter's gold rush. Maybe a main roster registered Ilya Dragunov could be once more the one to cause Imperium delirium. Maybe even Gunter's final IC fight be against LA Knight. You know what? We, we can dive into this another time. But for now, let's take a moment to celebrate a changing of the guard in the upper mid-card castle. Elvis has left the building as Gunter continues his unfinished Symphony Number no. 9, now officially the longest reigning WWE Intercontinental Champion of all time. Stay safe. Love you, bye.